Hi, good morning. My name is uh, Luca Derry and my colleague uh, Samuele will be talking together about uh, eBPF uh, in the context of uh, network traffic monitoring. So the idea is to use uh, and to show you an application of, of uh, eBPF to something meaningful. We're not talking about eBPF per se, but how, how to use it in, uh, in our world. So let's start with a few, few notes about us. I'm the founder of the Antop project. Uh, you heard this before when we talk about PF Ring. I'm also a lecturer at the University of Pisa. Samuele <laughs> is, uh, is a former student of mine and is working with us uh, uh, at Antop. Antop uh, is an open source project we started, I started in 1998, so very long time ago. It was about uh, monitoring uh, network traffic in a, in a simple way. Uh, don't think about uh, the internet, okay? The internet did not really exist as it is today. Okay, it was a totally different world. So over the time, we, we started from analyzing packets, okay, just to display to people, to accelerating packet capture, so PF ring. Uh, we have done many other things. Another thing, a good contribution, I think, to the open source community is uh, a library called NDPI that allows you to analyze uh, and dissect uh, packet payload. So it allows you, for instance, to, to tell you what is the application protocol of a certain communication. So this is called NDPI. You can find all our open source code in, on GitHub, so github.com slash ntop. And uh, so this is uh, the place where you will find our activities. Let's start uh, from the very beginning. So why, why we're here talking about uh, network monitoring. So uh, when we talk about network monitoring, so this is a, a definition coming from Techopedia. So we are talking about the ability, in essence, uh, to monitor a computer network to see what is happening, okay? So if there is something wrong, unexpected, so from the security standpoint, from the configuration, misconfiguration, this type of things. And usually th the way to do that is through packet capture. So in essence, we capture packets, we analyze packets, and we report users what is happening. This is why, for instance, uh, I, I started uh, PF3, because it was a way to accelerate packet capture. Packet capture has always been, you know, the main problem. So we have to receive this data. So the input uh, are packets. So if you talk uh, about that, so look at this picture, 2009, so 10 years ago. Okay, this was the picture of the end top world uh, many years ago. So PF ring was there. So we had a different way of polling packets, a better packet polar, TNAPI, and then we have all our application on top of it. Okay, so here we are talking about packets. We are talking about network adapters. We are talking about way to accelerate packet up, and then we have packet analysis. Again, 10 years ago. If you're talking about 2019, you go to GitHub, you download NTOPNG, so that, that is the successor of, uh, of NTOP, so the next generation. You will see a graph like this, you will see that there is a peak, you will see that there is probably an anomaly here. But you will see that packets are still first citizen. This morning, until now, we talked about packets. XTP, DPDK, and so on. Packets, packets, packets. Because packets are too many, so it's not possible really to handle packets easily, so you have to put them in a meaningful fashion. So in a way so that you can understand what is happening. Usually the way of doing that is through the concept of flows. So you put together, one after the other, packets with the five tuple. Uh, so same protocol, same IP source, destination <coughs> port, and so on. <coughs> so this is the it's an uncompressed version, so you will see packets. This is the compressed version, flows. So you see, my PC is talking with that PC over port 80, and all the packets of the same common action will be put together. And again, people that to see a peak, uh, again, there was a peak here, you want to see, hey, what's happening? You can see the flow. But if you don't trust flows, so you want to go down to packets, in NTOPNG you can click and say, give me the packets. So again, we're talking about packets. What's wrong with packets? I'm not against packets. Eh? For all my life I've done packet analysis. So it is good, OK? In particular, it is good if you want to be outside of the system you're monitoring. So we are here today at FOSDEM. So if I want to see what is happening in this room, I cannot put an agent on every single laptop. First of all, because it is impossible. You have, you have a smartphone, you have tablets, you have many things. So it's very easy to look at packets, so capture packets, classify them, put them on a web interface. Very good. However, there are some challenges. For instance, one is encryption. 
in NDPI we had to struggle fighting against that. Not that we have to decode the packet. Again, the packet inspection is not about decoding and dissecting the packet and extracting you know, your data. It is about understanding if you're talking about Gmail or if you're connected to your you know, home application. So we had to, for instance, to decrypt uh, the, the initial you know, uh, uh, certificate exchange to understand what is that about. However, there is virtualization. So in the past, uh, computers were you know, connected to the internet. But these days, you've seen uh, Cilium before, you will see a, a big machine with several containers all providing a service, actually a microservice, and all interacting. Sometimes the container moves on another place and so on. So if you look at the packets entering or leaving a machine, at the end you will see the same result. So you will see that uh, you're connected to a certain <coughs> website. But you don't understand the interaction of things happening inside the same computer. This is the main problem. And also when you deal with packets, you have to handle fragmentation, packet loss, retransmission. So the packet is not the native way of communicating. When you open a socket, you say, I want to connect to this port, I want to send get slash whatever. You don't know anything about packets. Okay? So you don't have to pay attention to IP address, nothing, zero. It's, it's the card that is doing for you. If you, there is a long MQ, it will split the packet into you know, segments and so on. So anyway, packets are nice, but they're not native. People don't understand packets. I mean, experts know what they're about. So years ago, I wanted to extend that and give more information about uh, the system, system introspection. I wanted to handle virtualization. I wanted to have also an ability of have a continuous drill down from a problem, let's say a peak, and say, what, what is happening? OK, my web server has talked with my SQL, and this was the, the reason. And then you go to flows, you go to packets. So, at the end, we are still using the same flow and paradigm, um, packet paradigm. But I want to see what is happening inside the system. If there is a security issue, today you can see, oh, I've seen this, this, this very nasty payload inside my packet. But you don't know the application that has sent <coughs> that payload. You don't know who has to receive the payload. You simply have you know, an IDS, an IPS that is, is reporting that. But you are blind with respect to what is happening inside the system. So we want to fix this problem. So this is what we are going to talk today. So in 2014, I was very excited because uh, I'm a good friend of the, the creator of, of Sysdig about Sysdig. I don't know if you are familiar with that. Sysdig was, uh, it is still a, a kernel module that you can install on, uh, on, on Linux. It looks like a TCP dump for system events. So in essence, uh, you can look at system events. You can see connect, uh, close, send, receive. So the idea was to give an idea, so when we have you know, application or containers talking to each other, to see, OK, my HTTP has talked with uh, my SQL, and this is the amount of data that has changed. However, this software, that again, 2014 was very, very nice, was designed by somebody that had packets in mind. Packets. OK, this was the idea. So use TCP dump over SysD. This was the problem. So we had, uh, so this code is still, uh, is still, is still available. We, had, we integrated that with uh, you know, Elasticsearch. You can see you know, all the nice graph, you know, top, one of the top processes, top, top of the, OK? Very nice. So I spent a real lot of time on that. But it was a, fail a failure. It was a very big failure for many reasons. First of all, it was using too much CPU. So you, c you have a process that is using 10 to 20% of the CPU on your box, simply because SysDig was designed with the packets in mind. So if there is a system that receives a lot of traffic, you have to analyze a lot of packets. And that is wrong. First of all, because you are loading the machine with the packets anyway, because you know, there is a lot of things to do. And second, because adding your monitoring uh, feature adds extra load on the system. Second, people don't really like to install agents. Okay, it's not, it's not <coughs> always possible, like I've said. But again, this is still doable. But the main problem is that SysDig requires a kernel module. And uh, you know, many people buy you know, commercial support, uh, buy you know, uh, Red Hat or whatever. And it, these people say, if you install a kernel module, then you are on your own. People still don't like that. And also, containers were not that popular in 2014. The, you know, Docker started to exist, but was not a, it was not a big problem at that time. So we, we were a little bit ahead of time. But the main problem was the CPU. I mean, monitoring was too expensive. 
and this was this was the problem. In essence, this is the <coughs> outwards. Just to give an example, so you suppose that you want to monitor a TCP connection. You have to track socket. You have to track send send receive receive. Then you have to put them together in flows similar to flows, and then you have to report the information. And this is very CPU expensive because you have to see, analyze every single packet. That is, that is the that is the problem. So CISDIC is too much packet oriented. Now I'm, I'm going to leave the microphone to to Samuel. Hi everyone, I'm Samuele and I studied uh, the application of ABPF to traffic monitoring with uh, Luca. So uh, ABPF is a very great tool that enables us to inject code uh, inside the kernel and, and, uh, and uh, have it executed when uh, a specific uh, target kernel function is invoked. Um, and so uh, this, uh, um, by attaching uh, uh, ABPF code to network functionalities, we are able to uh, avoid uh, uh, inspecting, uh, cap cap capturing, and analyzing uh, uh, the single packet, but uh, focusing only on the uh, events we are interested in. Um, furthermore, um, um, <coughs> uh, be because the, c the code is uh, executed inside the kernel, uh, we can compute metrics uh, and um, and uh, send it uh, to user space uh, only the things that are needed, and avoid sending all the information we can uh, we, we can collect. Uh, the, the and both these features gives uh, uh, us uh, um, a great savings in terms of CPU uh, of CPU usage. Furthermore, BPF has another key feature that is uh, that uh, uh, it doesn't need uh, the installation of, a, of another um, kernel model, but becomes uh, embedded in the modern Linux uh, kernel versions. So uh, this is very great uh, things. Uh, what we have done is uh, uh, inject uh, a BPF code uh, uh, inside the kernel. Uh, it's set up uh, inside the kernel. Uh, and uh, uh, g generate events uh, uh, and send it to user space uh, uh, through a circle buffer provided by BPF. So the structure of events uh, uh, is very simple. Uh, it's articulated in different, uh, uh, in different ways, but uh, uh, provide very simple information such as the, the destination or source uh, port and IP address, the protocol, or for example, the latency calculated from inside the kernel. So uh, it's uh, from the perspective of the kernel or, or the application. And not, from, uh, and not from the external point of view of, of uh, who captured the packet. Uh, another um, thing that uh, we are providing is uh, the PID or the user ID, or uh, for example, the, the full path of the, of the executable, uh, or the ta task name, or the executable, or the process name. Um, or for example, the time uh, uh, in which the uh, packet, uh, the, ev the event uh, has been triggered. Uh, and things like this. So, uh, uh, to do this, we attach uh, uh, the different probes, the dif different, um, uh, we in inject uh, code uh, to, um, we, we attach code to, to different kernel functions that are, for example, the TCP uh, connector, which is triggered when uh, the kernel connects uh, um, to uh, a remote or local host. <coughs> Uh, or, for example, to intercept uh, UDP or uh, uh, events uh, con concerning the change uh, in the state of a socket. For example, we can track when a socket is closed and, uh, um, and, um, uh, and, analy and analyze how much bytes uh, uh, has been received or sent through that uh, socket. Uh, another thing that we can capture is the retransmissions, the events regarding the retransmissions, uh, and, uh, and this is it. So. Um, to together this kind of, uh, of information, what we've done is uh, using uh, uh, a BPF helper function that is uh, BPF get current task to obtain the, the task, the struct associated to each uh, thread uh, and process. And uh, by navigating uh, through the kernel structures, uh, we, we can uh, co collect uh, this kind of information, such as the user uh, or, for example, the AC group. Uh, and, uh, Furthermore, by uh, using the, um, the, the socket that is provided with uh, the, the function call, for example, when uh, we connect, uh, uh, we use the TCP connect, uh, we, we provide as argument the socket that we, uh, that we want to use. Uh, by analyzing uh, the socket, we can uh, extract uh, information regarding uh, the protocol or, their, uh, or the destination address. Uh, so to provide uh, to provide visibility uh, concerning containers, what we have done is uh, uh, using the C group uh, that, that we uh, uh, that, uh, that 
that we collected uh, from inside the kernel to interact with the Docker daemon, to, to with uh, the Docker API, uh, and, uh, um, and gather uh, information concerning the container. This can be done because uh, the C group identifier that we, uh, we, we found that this group identifier that we, we have extracted from the kernel structure and uh, sent to user space uh, is the same identifier that uh, Docker used to uh, track containers. Uh, so um, what, we have uh, what we have basically done is uh, uh, collect this information, collect the, the C-group identifier, send it to user space, and uh, uh, at user space level, uh, interact with the Docker daemon uh, to uh, co collect information and store them, and store them uh, in a cache. Uh, so we, can, uh, um, we have information like, for example, the container name or, uh, uh, or uh, for how much time has been the container alive. Um, furthermore, we have found that uh, uh, from from, uh, from the, 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 the 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 result of the query, uh, we can uh, um, obtain information from uh, from Kubernetes, such as the pod, uh, uh, such as the pod, uh, or the or the cluster where the container is uh, uh, is is in. So we have uh, uh, a greater uh, view about uh, what is going on uh, on the machine in a in a bigger way concerning uh, uh, Kubernetes. Kubernetes uh, view. Uh, so under the hood, uh, this TCP accept has been implemented uh, uh, very, very uh, has been implemented very simply because um, uh, we have attached a probe to the to the um, to, to, to the um, to, to, to the return of the function call. So when the function re returns, uh, our code is executed. Uh, when our code is executed, we use the socket that uh, uh, is returned by the function to collect. Uh, to, to, to collect net network information and uh, use the, the, the task structure to, um, to, to, to collect information from, uh, of the user and, uh, and concerning the process. Uh, so in a, very uh, in a very similar way, um, we have tracked the retransmission and uh, events concerning socket closed, uh, when, when a socket is closed. But uh, for, uh, for, for the connect, uh, it has been more difficult. Indeed, we have to use an hash table. Uh, because these, uh, be because we want um, uh, not not only to return uh, information um, con about the user or, or the network, but we want to return also the the return code of the function uh, to to check if uh, it has failed or if it has been successful. So what we have done is uh, uh, attach a probe when the, the function is invoked, when the t when the TCP connect is invoked, collect the socket that is passed as argument. Uh, then the function is, uh, is executed, uh, the, the controller re returns to, 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 the, to the function, and when the function re returns uh, the, uh, the, re the return code, our code is uh, uh, e e executed again, we check in the hash table where we put uh, uh, the socket, uh, and is indexed uh, by using the thread uh, identifier. Uh, we, 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 we get this, this socket and, um, and track ne network information uh, <laughs> beside the return code. Um, and in this way, we uh, by putting also the kernel time, we were able also to to to, to measure the latency of the connection. Uh, okay. Hmm? Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So in essence, we have integrated uh, ABPF with uh, with EntopNG through a library called uh, ABPF Flow that uh, that allows us to avoid uh, uh, you know seeing all this. Uh, these internals of eBPF and just to report to report events. Just to give an idea, this is a, this is a typical example. So you start eBPF flow. This, are, this is a helper. It allows you to see you know, the kernel time, the process ID, what is happening, who's talking to who, what is the process, uh, what is the command, something like that. <coughs> so the idea is that we want to make this library available to, to also to everyone so that you can put your application on top of it and forget eBPF. So for you, it will be a source of information. So currently in, uh, in EntopNG, this, uh, this is a preview of, uh, of what we have, allows you to see next to the communication also the user and the, and the process that is executing that. So you will see this, this, uh, this packet is going to Apache, okay? or this packet is coming from a Chrome thread. And uh, this is for the source and for the destination. Of course, thanks to the packet inspection, we can analyze that. This is very important because it allows us to augment uh, the information. So we have an idea of what users are doing so what am I doing? OK, I run in Thunderbird, so I'm using Dropbox. So this is how I use my, my network. So not just analyze packet, but also analyze 
you know, activities. So what, what is a certain user is doing? And I don't know if you have, you have noticed, but we have the full part of the application. So in case you, you will have, a, let's say, a security violation, you will see you know, that a certain packet is very bad. So you know exactly the process that has, uh, has created that packet and the user and the container eventually. So this is, uh, this is important. We have also the ability of putting all these things together. So you see you know, what, what a certain process is doing, what, what are the, the process uh, activities, and what are the users uh, doing inside the container. But you know, this is very nice. Okay, we just uh, track you know, some, some, some uh, events, very simple. So if you have a uh, you know, gigabit of traffic, we simply see co connect the response and periodic update. But we have a problem with UDP. Inside UDP, every packet um, is independent. So you can open a socket, send a packet to, to each of, the, of you. So how do we avoid playing with <coughs> packets again? How do we avoid sending to user space an event for every single packet? So at the moment, we, we have used an e-kernel uh, uh, LRU so that uh, when, whenever we see packets, similar packets from, from the same uh, to the uh, uh, source of the same destination, we just send the event once, okay, every, every time. So let's say for every, for every second, for every 10 seconds, we, we see several packets. So especially if you have a VPN, let's say before somebody mentioned open VPN. So this is a typical example. So we send an event every, every few seconds, so without doing that. So this is one of the problems that we are still trying to, to tackle. Unfortunately, everybody's talking about eBPF in very positive <laughs> terms, but there are also some, some problems with it. The first problem is that BCC is not what, uh, what I consider a, a stable you know, uh, tool. First of all, there are some limitations in terms of memory, loops, this type of things. You might say, so why, why is it a problem? It is a problem <coughs> because whenever you have to decode a packet, you have to know, uh, you, you have to go through certain layers. So in fact, before in the presentation of XDP, uh, uh, people put a lot of emphasis about the speed. Say, I'll give, this packet, give me this packet. But if you have to look at the packet before making your decision, so you have to decode it. If you want to decode it inside the kernel with eBPF, you have to deal with the problem and the limitation of, uh, of this type of tools. Uh, another point, for instance, is that uh, you know, the BCC uh, tools are changing very often. Okay? So you see people that are playing with Python, and they're happy. But if you play with the C API, you know, sometimes this might change. We have although also some, some other little limitations that uh, I hope that will be solved uh, in the future. So just to wrap up, we, it is now possible to see the full path from packets to activities. If there is something bad happening, I will not say this packet is bad, but I will say, this user with this process has created the problem. That's it. Thanks to the, you know, the container paradigm, and thanks to the fact that our library can run on the host, not on each container, so we have the ability of monitoring all the containers of a system and to pr collect this metadata and attach <coughs> this to, to packets. The load is very little. You know, with our tool, the load is less than 1%, so it's almost unnoticeable. And uh, we have this information. This one uh, showing this preview, you know, it will be part of the next uh, NTOPNG uh, version, version 4. But we, we plan to have this, um, this library available so that uh, there might be other tools willing to use it. So that, for instance, I imagine a network probe or an IDS that want to add this information next to, the, to their problems they are reporting. Thank you very much.